Ahu Pua'a is a Hawaiian word. Ahu means a, it's a stone altar and Pua'a is a, is a pig. The island was divided up into these more or less self-sustaining units where you had all the resources you need from the forest and the, and the streams and the rivers and the agricultural lands and the ocean to, to have a thriving community. So at the, at the boundaries of the Ahupua'a, you'd have these stone altars with a carved image of a pig's head on it and that would delineate the borders. You know, the whole concept of Ahupua'a is really trying to figure out how you can utilize the resources of your place to make things thrive. Or the way that we interpret the Ahupua'a system is something that's not only we need to get back to in Hawaii, but also as, as a globe in looking at um, watershed management. This is one of the smallest habitable watersheds on the planet. I mean, this watershed right here is two miles deep. But the, you know, the issues that we face here in, in this watershed is the same that you know, they face in the Mississippi or the Mekong or the Nile. They're just on these scales that are so much bigger than, than you know, as a species we've evolved to comprehend. And if we can look at those issues in this small compact area and, and talk about them and then it's in, in such a way that it's, it's not too hard for our visitors to kind of extrapolate up into the watersheds they live in is what we try and do. Now if, you, if you look back at the, the ancient Hawaiian civilization, the management of fresh water was at the foundation of you know, success on so many levels. And, and it was important, it was the foundation of various aspects of the philosophy system and the religious system. And you, you see that in the language. The, the word for fresh water is wai, and the word for wealth or abundance is wai wai. So literally, you know, if you had an abundance of water, you were considered to be wealthy because you could, you're living in a thriving system. And that's, that was uh, the concept of wealth in the old days, is, is how much your system was thriving. And, you know, nowadays, we pretty much live along the coast where it's pretty to live. But yes. in the old days, at, at the maximum capacity of the island, people were living all the way into the back of the valleys and farming back there. And, and you go back, even in this valley now, you go to the back and you see terrace after terrace after terrace all the way to the waterfall. And it's just mind-blowing to imagine, wow, there's people living back here. Like, very few people would choose to live that far in the valley, away from the beautiful ocean and, and the fun of the waves. But if you had a huge population that's the only place to live, then that's where you, that's where you live. Yeah. Where you have intensified agriculture, in proximity to a body of water, you have an algal bloom and then all the bad stuff that happens with the algal bloom. But the way our ancestors thought is, basically, how do you turn a wasteful byproduct into a beneficial resource? Mm -hmm. So you ha have all this intensely nutrified water flowing out that would, if left unchecked, it would go out and create algal blooms off, out in the reefs and throw off the whole system out there. But instead, our ancestors developed the technology of making fish ponds. All this nutrified water flows into the pond before it flows out into the ocean. And once it's in the pond, you contain the algal bloom in the pond. And then that allows you to farm herbivorous fish like mullets and milkfish and, and other things. So you're taking this, what would, you know, could be a really bad byproduct of an intensified agriculture system, and you're turning it into a beneficial resource and looking at the algal bloom as something that you can use to your advantage to help the ocean produce more fish than it would on its own.